Okay, so thank you very much for inviting me and thank you for still being awake at half past three on a Tuesday. I'm sure your day's been jam-packed. I spoke with one fellow who's got, was it 46 pages of notes that you've taken on your phone today? That's a good sign. So there must have been a lot of really great talks today. But right now I've got to try and keep you awake for another 45 minutes before we go to the panel. And I have to say when I walked in it felt a little bit warm and I'm thinking, oh dear, how are we going to keep these people awake? So I'm going to try and get you to be awake by getting really excited about what is happening in Canberra and how your city is transforming and that you are living at a pivotal moment in your city's economic history. So I'm going to get you excited, hopefully. Um, I'll try various tricks to, to keep you awake as well. So um, actually, I, I'm part-time the CEO of the Canberra Innovation Network, so supposedly about three days a week I um, uh, help steer the ship and then I do various other innovation-y things around the country, including giving talks like this, and I absolutely love talking to people about innovation, and I particularly like talking about the Camera Innovation Network. So again, thank you very much for inviting me. It's lovely to be here. And I'm hoping that after this talk, you'll see how you can interact with the, with the network and the community we have here. And that's not a sign to go to sleep. <laughs> I can still see you. So um, I'm going to start with a question. Innovation in the ACT. So the fellow who introduced me was talking about he's sick of hearing, or he's happy to hear, pleased to hear something great about Canberra. So I want you to start thinking, what do you think of when you think about Canberra and the ACT and how are we going to change that? Then I'm going to introduce you to the Canberra Innovation Network, do the who, why, how, what. And uh, we'll see how the time goes. We'll play it by ear, but I'm going to do a bit about barriers and challenges because when you're cross-pollinating an entire ecosystem, I'm sure you can understand. You guys try and cross-pollinate uh, within your, your departments, but imagine trying to cross-pollinate across an entire ecosystem. I want you to think about that and come up with some barriers and challenges and what that might mean for you and how you can overcome the barriers and challenges you face around cross-pollination. Uh, then I'll end up with a few highlights to just keep you excited so that you're not too depressed after looking at the challenges and the barriers um, so you can see some exciting things, the way we've got over these barriers and uh, end up with what else, which some of that will be things that you can get involved in. So, what is Canberra? It's a beautiful picture. I love the colours and I love Parliament House. As a POM, when I first saw Parliament House, I fell in love with it. I think it's a beautiful building. But I want you to think about what you think of. And I want the, can we have the lights on just for this bit, please? Because I want people to know. Is that possible? Someone like, great. When you think of Canberra, what do you think of it? Now, I've, I give a lot of talks and I ask questions and nobody puts their hand up, nobody says anything. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to think about what you think of. And if no one puts their hand up, I'm just going to come and find someone. So I want you to think. When you think of Canberra, what pops into your mind? Frost. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> but lovely blue skies, yeah? Horses. Yeah, yes. Oh, Four Seasons. Sorry, I'm a horse rider. So, <laughs> The Four Seasons, yes, that's something great about Canberra. What else? What was that? Can you say that again? New. Yeah, yep, excellent. It is. It is going through a transformation. There is something new happening in Canberra. Yep. Museums and galleries, yes, there was something over here. Icons, yes, national icons. Home, that's a lovely, that's a lovely one, yes. Home. Embassies, yes, yep. I haven't heard anyone say government yet. <laughs> you try to block that one out, do you? Yeah, okay, well, here's a, here's a bit of a, you know, bit of a lever here, a bit of a giveaway, yes. Um, I have been to places where I've heard very prominent people, people who I'd actually like to think differently, when somebody mentions Canberra, they go, oh, Canberra. Um, these are sort of the sort of people that pop in and pop out. I'm sure you know exactly the sorts of people I'm talking about. And I'm really disappointed that that's what they think of. And I also think that Canberra is trying to change that. So if you think we went through our, the centenary, was it 18 months ago? The centenary. And so that, that was the brand Canberra came about. So confident, bold and ready. That's what Canberra's trying to show that it is. Confident, bold and ready. That's something exciting to be part of, isn't it? Confident, bold, and ready. Are you confident, bold, and ready? Excellent. So uh, I think it is changing. I don't know if you've seen, there's a short video about uh, how, how people think of Canberra and how we're trying to portray Canberra. And I, I'm also on the verge of tears every time I see it because I think it's so um, 
evocative. You know, they, they have obviously the Parliament House, but then they show people on bikes having fun cycling around the place. They have people eating fantastic food. If you think of all the, the ways that food has changed um, in Canberra the last few years, it's really quite exciting. But they're missing business. They're missing industry. They're missing entrepreneurship and innovation. And we have in Canberra ANU, Australian National University, arguably the nation's most highly ranked research university. University of Canberra with its own uh, incredible strengths and partnerships that it's building up. University of New South Wales Canberra with its own strengths. Um, we've got CSIRO and NICTA based here. Why are we not talking about entrepreneurship and innovation in Canberra? And in fact, I know people have been whinging about the fact that those particular institutes don't integrate well with, with the, the city, and that's something that is changing, and it's certainly some of it is changing through the Canberra Innovation Network. So, innovation in the ACT. Um, I thought I'd just put up a few pictures of some of the startups. These are new baby startups uh, in the ACT, just to give you a bit of a, a, bit of a flavor. So on the left here, we've got enabled employment. Who's heard of enabled employment? Fantastic, got some hands going up. This company, has, I'm, I think it's about two years old, set up by an ex-public servant who uh, decided that she needed to do something about disability and employment in disability, and she realized there was a gap there. So she set up an online platform for linking disabled people with employment. And this, this got the opportunity to go global. In fact, I think they're looking at going into the US fairly soon. They've won all sorts of prizes uh, for their, their startup, and they're growing at a really rapid rate. So that's a great poster child for us in the ACT. Um, just to show it's not all about ICT, this here is Solar Bear. Uh, that top there I took on holiday with me last week. I went um, over to Indonesia, had a holiday in Indonesia, and I wore this, uh, this new... Um, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, God, when you go swimming, the tops that keep the sun off. Rash vests, that's the word, thank you. Uh, beautiful rash vests for men. You know, as women, you go out and you look at rash vests and they're like, they're saggy and they're baggy. And if you're lucky, you can find a pink one. And that's about it. Well, she's making some fantastic designs for very comfortable, beautiful rash vests. Um, and so I took one of her first ones. She hasn't actually made any on a produ production line yet. That's happening this week. Uh, so I took it off with me uh, to Indonesia, and it was fantastic. So this is a, something going to be manufactured. So that's a product. It's not, uh, not um, just a service. Then on the left here, we've got Made For Me. I reckon Made For Me is set to be part of the movement that is transforming manufacturing. So Made For Me is a 3D uh, printing company that basically matches you with designers and 3D printers anywhere in, in, the, in the world that they've got their networks. So if you can imagine, you decide that you want to make, let's say you've got an auntie in, in India and you want to make them a ring. So uh, you really not, haven't got much of an idea about design, so they can link you up with a designer. Uh, and that designer could be anywhere in the world. And then you want to actually get it to them. Uh, you could have it manufactured and then sent over through the post, but why not link in with a 3D printer that's around the corner from where she is? So then um, you, know, you can get it to her, her really quickly. So if you look at how manufacturing is changing, the 3D printing and then linking that as in a global network is a bit of a game changer. So that's pretty exciting. Here, based in Canberra. And then Sign On Site, this is another um, award-winning uh, startup. It's an app that helps you if you are build on a building site. I think, uh, I'm not sure of the stats, I think it's something like 20 or 30% of the people that go onto a site, people don't know they're on there, which obviously is a bit of an issue <laughs> if something goes wrong on the site. So this is a way of making that a lot easier. Uh, so it's set to revolutionize how people manage safety on sites. So these are Canberra-based startups, and they're all less than two years old. So it's happening in Canberra. Now, this one, I might actually have to get you to fiddle around with that. Yes, and then press the play button at the bottom. There you go. Yep. I'm playing this because it's to try and wake you up, and it's a really great video, so hopefully you'll uh, be waking by. Once upon a time, people took hours and hours of video, recording the special events of their lives. And very soon, they had so much footage, they didn't really know what to do with it. Then came Mobflick, the revolutionary app that changed the way mobile video is created, finished, and shared. Just download the app, select a mob script that's been written by a professional filmmaker, and you will be guided to get the shots you need, just like a professional. When you're done, just press the upload button, and Mobflick will automatically finish your film the way it's done by the best editors and post-production studios. 
Within moments, your finished movie is back on your phone. Watch it, reshoot a shot if you need, or share it with friends. So now, when you have an important moment in your life, turn it into an amazing story. Or just have some fun with your friends making short films written by professionals. You gotta save him. He's gonna make it. <laughs> so that's another startup in the ACT. A young young fellow who set that up as an idea, which is using um, designers from all around the world to design what movies could be like. Something again, like I say, developed in the ACT. So that's all the startups. What about the rest of the ecosystem? Because you know it's great to have a lot of bun bunch of young people with ideas, but. What else do you need? I'm going to go over to this one because I want to actually, <laughs> actually read it myself. Um, this is actually a picture of the Silicon Valley tech innovation ecosystem. So it's saying, what do you need to get the Silicon Valley type of an ecosystem going? I'm not saying that we will have a Silicon Valley type ecosystem, but a number of the things that are here and are needed um, in Silicon Valley also are needed here. So down uh, the bottom here, we've got university basic research. So do you reckon we've got university basic research in Canberra? Well, I talked about our five foundation members. You bet we've got some really fantastic um, basic research happening in Canberra. Um, what about some national labs? Yep, we talked about CSIRO and NICTA, so we've got the national labs. Uh, what about entrepreneurs? Do you reckon we've got entrepreneurs in the ACT? Well, I showed you a few young ones up there, but what you probably don't know, or you might not know, is you've got a bunch of serial entrepreneurs in Canberra, some very successful serial entrepreneurs who have got money and time that they want to and are are keen to invest into the startup scene in, in Canberra. And there's a particular group that I'm thinking of called Capital Angels, angel investors who are linked and connected in the ACT and getting engaged in growing new companies. Um, what about accelerators? Anyone think we've got an accelerator in the ACT? Okay, I'm not talking about um, accelerating electrons and synchrotrons and imaging and that sort of stuff. I'm talking about the sorts of accelerators that accelerate the growth of startups. So a startup's got some baby idea, maybe got uh, one or two customers. What the accelerator then does is over a three month period really accelerates their growth. So by the end of that three months, they've got customers, they're networked, and they're ready to be invested in. Now we do, we've got the Griffin Accelerator in the ACT. And an incubator is a bit like an accelerator, but it's a longer period of time. So they look after companies for a bit longer, and they don't burn them out in three months. They give them a bit longer to, uh, to learn learn what they need to learn and a bit more support. And we're actually about to launch uh, an incubator on Friday. So the Chief Minister is going to launch the Kiln Incubator on Friday. So we'll have that in the ACT. Mentors and angels. I talked about the angel investors. We ab ab definitely have those. And mentors, you've got a lot of mentors giving a lot of time in the ACT. Venture capitalists, yes, there's a couple of venture capital groups in the ACT. Peer networks, legal and IP banks, IT, accounting, all that sort of support for startup companies we have, including we've got Lighthouse Innovations in the room, so they're a fantastic part of the network that are providing um, advice and uh, also money and mentoring and a whole range of other things to help support um, growth of startups. Large base of early corporate adopters. Do you know who that is in, in the ACT, who the biggest one of those is? You. Because the largest corporate um, adopter that we have in the ACT is the Commonwealth Government. And if you think about the opportunity we have to really transform the way that you do business through entrepreneurship, then I think that you'll realize that there's a big opportunity to work with this base. So that's you guys. And then what happens is your companies get successful, they sell them or they make a lot of money, and then these serial entrepreneurs invest money back into the system and more of their ideas. And we have a lot of that in, uh, in the ACT, so I've just talked about a few of those, uh, but there's more that I haven't mentioned. So that fertile ground is here in the ACT for us to grow something like this. It's a, it's a pretty exciting opportunity, I'm sure you'll agree. Something that's not on here that we have in Canberra um, that other, other places may not have and certainly don't have in Australia is the embassies. So someone mentioned um, when they think about Canberra, think of the embassies. If you want to get into global supply chains, if you want to get into global markets, it's about relationships. So there's these people that we can form relationships with through the embassies, and that's something that, uh, that's going on as well. So fertile ground. So what is the network then? What are, what are we here uh, for, and what are we doing, and how do we start? So it started by the ACT government wanting to do something a little bit different. They uh, realized that a number of programs were coming to an end, and they actually had a big chunk of money rather than a small chunk of money to do something with, which is unusual in the ACT, because there's you know, obviously not, not a huge amount in, uh, just in the territory government. So the other thing that was going on was that they saw that there was a level of maturity 
in the ecosystem where they felt they could trust the ecosystem or the community, the innovation community, to come up with the ideas about what needed to be done. So they went to them and they said, okay, guys and gals, what should we be doing? And the community agreed unanimously that we should be setting up this network. There's a lot of great activity going on, but it needed to be connected. It needed to be connected so that you could make the most of it and leverage. It needed to be promoted so that people could know about it and that would attract more people, more ideas, more money, etc. And it needed to be accelerated. So what were the gaps and how, how could they be filled? So that's what the network was set up to do. Connect, promote, and accelerate. It is a pivotal moment in, in the ACT history. I mentioned that right at the beginning. But the number of people that have, have said to a lot of us, they can imagine looking back in 10 years' time and going, wow, look where we are now. Uh, and that uh, the drawing together, the leveraging of everyone's expertise and knowledge and connecting it, promoting it, accelerating it, is something really important for our history. Uh, but it was also realized that you, know, you can't just give this to a group and say, off you go. That group needs to be very much connected. So we've been set up as a company. We're not government. We're a company, company limited by guarantee. We have five foundation members, Australian National University, University of Canberra, University of New South Wales, Canberra, NICTA, and CSIRO. They realized that they wanted to grow the ecosystem, but they couldn't do it on their own, so they're collaborating to do that. But even that's not enough. I mean, that's very research heavy, isn't it? And yet, I've just talked about the whole ecosystem. That whole ecosystem needs to be connected and collaborating. So that's what we're trying to do. And obviously, also collaborating with the ACT government. So um, that's, that's a given. So what sort of things we want to have happen? Well, if we want to transform the economy, because that's what we're about doing, trying to diversify it so that uh, we've got a lot more things going on than just trying to supply to the, uh, the government, we need to grow up the startups, so we need to grow a lot more startups. That means we need to really grow that deal flow. We need to help people understand they can be entrepreneurs. We need to help them understand what it means to be an entrepreneur. We need to help them understand how to grow that, that business. Uh, and I'm not saying that the network does all of that, but we can connect people to people who do that. So we want to grow the startup significantly. Uh, if you think about our foundation members, think about the thousands of young people in those institutes who are bright, um, ingenious, creative, who can then be uh, linked into this sort of system so that they can start to set up startups. SMEs, so there are a bunch, I didn't actually talk about the SMEs earlier, I just talked about the startups to give you an idea of what's going on in the innovation sphere, but there's some really fantastic small to medium enterprises in the ACT that have gone global. But how, do, and they've taken quite a few years to grow, how do we make that happen faster? How can we help the SMEs grow faster, get to global routes to market? So we're looking at how to do that, again in collaboration with others. This picture here, you can't really see it, but it's a bunch of multinational logos. So what we really want to do is to grow the startup base, help SMEs grow faster, and then try to get the multinationals to see that Canberra is a fantastic base, base for their innovation. So come here to collaborate. Collaborate with the research base. Collaborate with the startups. Collaborate with the SMEs. Collaborate with each other. Um, if you look at what large multinationals are doing around the world, they've realized that um, they need to collaborate with smaller companies and startups to be able to, uh, to um, innovate fast enough. So if you look at the rate of innovation around the world, large multinationals, they're, they're like government. They're like uh, Commonwealth government. They, it's very difficult to move quickly. The only way they're going to be able to move quickly enough for the market is to collaborate with, with these sorts of innovators. So you'll notice large multinationals setting up their own venture capital funds, their own accelerators, their own little ecosystems. Um, for instance, Telstra with its Muru D accelerator. And this is them trying to tap into that market. So we want to be really attractive, a honeypot for them to come here and, and, and locate and collaborate with us. We've also been asked to uh, set up some new industry sectors. So, um, you know, you want a bit of focus. We're actually at the moment uh, talking to anybody who's got any ideas in any sector. But the ACT government wants us to support the growth of some specific sectors. And actually health is one of those. Space is one, if you think of Stromlo, Mount Stromlo and all the fabulous research there, and also the University of New South Wales and all the fabulous research around space they've got. So connecting that with the defence sector companies in the ACT, you can imagine a space sector growing. Health, uh, the University of Canberra uh, have set up a health precinct, so there's some work to be done there. Renewable energies is another one, and there's, uh, there's several others that we're going to help in some way or another around those. Uh, we want to become a globally recognised hub of entrepreneurial success, a clever, connected and creative city. Now, the creative is an interesting one, because I'm sure you're all sitting here thinking technology, 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 technology. 
But actually, there's a lot of creatives that need to be linked in with the technology to make that usable for a start. Plus, there's a lot of innovation that the creatives are engaged in. So we're trying to reach out to them as well. So how do we do that? Come and see. We're on level five, one more street in the ACT Health Building. So a comfortable home for a lot of you. You've probably been there. Um, we have the whole of level five. And the first thing that we've connected is a couple of companies that offer space type services, so space and facilities. So co-working space, entry 29, that's in our, our facility. We've got 1,600 square metres. Uh, they don't have all of that. They've got about 1,000 or maybe 700 square metres of that. Um, they started off when they joined us with, I think it was 40, I'm sure Anna will be able to correct me, 40 um, uh, regular users. And now that's, not, that's now up to 120. So in a period of six months, uh, they trebled in size. So that just goes to show there's a lot of um, energy and enthusiasm about starting up companies. The Griffin Accelerator, that's in our, our space now. And we also have an, the incubator that we're about to launch and an event space. We've got a really huge event space where we can run panel events, we can run workshops, we can run um, launches of startups. This Friday, like I said, Cheapness is going to launch our incubator. And we can have technology demonstrations, a whole range of things in that event space. And this is all something new for Canberra, to have all of that in one place. In fact, I don't think this is anywhere in Australia where you've got the whole lot all in one place. It makes it so much easier for people to come in and visit. So mentors can come in and they can interact with a, a critical mass of startups. So this is something new for, for Canberra. And do drop in. Now, in terms of the programs we have, I talked about those young people in the universities. They're, it's not just in the universities, it's also outside. So in December last year, so we, I should have said we launched in November last year, so we're still babes. Um, but in December last year, I said to a couple of young people, could you please work with some young people we don't normally interact with to co-develop a program that will get them excited about entrepreneurship? And we picked the creative sector, so the musicians, the artists, the graphic designers, etc. And they designed a program called STIR, Cause a STIR. We weren't sure how this was going to take off, but they, uh, they wanted an online competition where they were going to learn along the way and then um, have it a competition, an online competition at the end of their business idea. In two months, there were 16 and a half thousand hits on that website. Nine and a half thousand of those were unique users. So that's nine and a half thousand young people in Canberra that wanted to or were interested in becoming entrepreneurs. So don't tell me that we don't have this capacity in Canberra. We do have a bunch of, in this case, young people really interested in, in this space. And in fact, if you talk to people coming out of Harvard Business School and ask them what they want to do, about 70 or 80% of them will say they want to start up a company. So there's a bit of a shift going on with, with the next generation. They're a bit sick of working for the large, large companies, and they realize that actually there's a bit of fun and games to be had in the startup sphere. Um, we have, you guys will be interested in an ex-public servants um, program. So we've just been co-designing what that might look like, what people who want to leave the public service and set up their own company might want. Uh, there's been a bit of um, conversations and interviews. I think it's tomorrow there's a workshop to draw that all together with a, with a working group. And then we'll uh, be putting on some programs to help any of you who want to uh, launch out of the public service. Um, we have a program for um, indigenous, the indigenous, uh, so the Torres Strait Islands and the indigenous population, um, and Aboriginal and Torres Strait, Torres Strait Islands, sorry. We had a yarning circle. So again, that co-design, we wanted to talk with uh, indigenous people and say, well, what, what would you like? So we had a yarning circle. About 22 indigenous people turned up and talked about what they wanted. So that's uh, kicked off. Then we have a program for small to medium enterprises, helping them accelerate. We have the Inspiring Australia person in our team. I don't know if you know about that program, but that's around STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. I'm sure you've heard it in some of the other talks, but 70% of the high growth industry sectors of the future involve STEM. So if we're not in STEM, and at the moment I think it's about 19% of, of the young people who go to university study it, if we're not upping that number, we are stuffed in Australia. 70% of the future industries are going to need STEM qualifications. So we have to do something about that. I've actually been involved in uh, STEM communication for decades, and I think we try to shout at young people louder, thinking they're foreigners. But in fact, what we've got to do is change the, uh, change the conversation. So we're marrying STEM with entrepreneurship. And you should see the look on young people's faces. We had a school come through. We asked them, OK, how many of you like STEM? Yeah, two people put their hand up. 
You then talk to them about entrepreneurship, take them to see the young entrepreneurs, come back and run a lean startup workshop for them, end of it, ask them how many like STEM, and a whole load more hands go up. So I think there's, a, there's something in it. Um, we are looking at what to do around social innovation. There's going to be an innovation challenge, I think, in August um, around disability and how you can apply um, innovation and entrepreneurship to disability. What sort of companies can you set up to help with that? Um, we have lean startup workshops. So if any of you are interested in how to get into lean startup, come along to our workshops first Wednesday of every month and a monthly drop-in, which is after that. So first Wednesday of every month, come on in. Um, we uh, have set up a collaborative innovation lab. So uh, one example there was a... Um, it was actually a hospital wanted to go paperless, so we drew together a hospital, a large, multi a couple of large multinationals, a couple of SMEs, and a startup to start looking at what that might look like. But we'll have a range of other collaborative opportunities that we'll play with. Uh, and the voice here is to remind me that the ACT government comes to us as a voice of innovation. So, for instance, if they've got an issue around venture capital and they don't know what to do, they can come to us. We can draw together the whole network and give a one voice view to the ACT government. Uh, the one I'm particularly proud of with that one was that we were asked to uh, about what to do around procurement. So please talk to me about procurement later, because obviously you guys are, are, are keys to making that work. Anyway, the ACT government has announced a small business innovation partnership program, which is going to try and bust the, that problem with procurement that SMEs and startups have with, with government. So I think I've probably got about five minutes left, so I'm actually not going to give you a, an opportunity to sit down and think about the barriers and challenges, but just for a minute, think about how, what do you think some of the challenges might be? Trying to bring together five of those research institutes, the whole innovation ecosystem, which includes government, service providers, venture capitalists, et cetera, et cetera. What do you think? Has anyone got any ideas of some of the challenges that might go with that? Yes, fortunately, it's not just me. <laughs> So the great, um, we do have, we have about six people in the, in the team. We really don't have a lot of money, but we've got about six people, and they're all part-time. Um, well, we're all paid part-time, but we're all working a lot more than part-time. But that's not the answer either. The answer is actually to collaborate. So there's um, Rob from Collabit here, Anna um, from uh, Innova um, Lighthouse Innovations, and there's others in the room here. This is not the network group making this happen. This is the whole community making this happen. Any others you can think of? Okay, here's one for you to think about. Got five research institutes and you've got to come up with one legal agreement. <laughs> how, how easy do you reckon that is? <laughs> In fact, we actually had about three legal agreements to get through. Um, the first one took about six weeks. The third one took about one week because we learned how to do it along the way. And the trick is... You get all of the legal people in a room and you tell them they can't leave until it's sorted. <laughs> so um, anyway, that was, there's a couple of, of, of challenges you can think through, but ask me at the panel afterwards if you want to know more. So a few highlights I'm just going to quickly um, whiz through. Uh, this was after three months. You have to put a quarterly review together. And after three months, <coughs> we got one of the players, the Griffin Accelerator, saying that we're already changing and energizing the culture. We're giving an atmosphere of achievement and progress. And one of the youth, I loved this one, this is the, the youth workshop, said that it's looking at how switched on our community of young people really is, and it's placing uh, Canberra as the premier Australian city for nurturing the entrepreneurial spirit. So that's the young people saying that. The young people are really excited about being able to shape Canberra how they want it to be. Other ones, I talked about Entry29, uh, the co-working space trebling in size, uh, and if you do end up in the co-working space, there's about $185,000 of free software you can get. So the, the Microsofts, et cetera, et cetera, Amazons are all jumping on board and giving away free software to, to startups, obviously for a certain period of time, and then you've got to pay. <laughs> they're, not, they're not daft. Um, the second round of Griffin, well, I, it was really exciting there to see the number of companies that were product-based, so it's not just services, it's actually making things. I think that's really good for Canberra. Um, but also that 40% of the founders were female. That's unheard of in innovation ecosystems. <laughs> About You'd be happy if you got 15%. So 40% is magnificent. I, told, I talked about the Youth Stir program having 16,500 hits in two months. We've had events in our space. Now, we don't run all these events. We only run a very few events. There's a bunch of other people come and use our space. But we've had over 2,000 people come through our space. In terms of MailChimp, we've got about 4,000 subscribers. So if you want to subscribe to our, <coughs> excuse me, 
our email updates. Get onto our website and join the MailChimp and you can get the updates. Um, I, I talked about the Small Business Innovation Partnership Program, which I th was really significant. That's going to make a big difference to the startups and the <coughs> SMEs and the ACT. We held our first drop-in activity last week. It was sold out in 24 hours. So if you want to go to the next one, get online and uh, register now. <laughs> and I got very excited because we got charity status, which obviously helps us from a tax perspective. <coughs> this is actually my, my second last slide. What's happening next? We're going to run a sandpit around the health industry I talked about that you might be interested in. We've got a book launch on Thursday night, a fellow who left uh, the public service wrote about his experience setting up a company, and uh, he's got some of his mates to write chapters about their experience too. So that book is going to be launched on, uh, on Thursday. Come along and hear about it. We've got Lean Startup Workshops having in the happening in the Innovation Month specifically for public servants. Um, there's, about, there's three of them, one a week, so it starts next week. We've started talking to various <coughs> departments about providing support for them. Definitely going to run out. Um, and the innovation challenge I talked about around disability. Invest Canberra, we're working with them to try and make Canberra somewhere that people want to invest in from the startup perspective and the SMEs. We're working with Visit Canberra because we're trying to see this is a pla place for people to visit from a science and technology perspective. And lastly, something I really want to do is I want you to be able to walk around Canberra and be part of an innovative urban environment so that wherever you go, you can feel the sense of being innovative and entrepreneurial. So we're going to work with some people around how to do that. So lastly, last slide, what is Canberra? The very first one was government. But what is Canberra? And what will Canberra be? What is your Canberra going to be? Is it going to be like Seoul in South Korea? Very, very innovative, innovative place to be. Or is it going to be Wellington? Uh, sorry, not Wellington. Um, yeah, it is Wellington. The, uh, actually, this is, I, I hope I got a picture of Wellington here. <laughs> <coughs> which is the uh, world's coolest little city, which is what Andrew Barr wants Canberra to be. What is Canberra going to be? And you can help drive that. So that's what I'm going to say. Uh, feel free to ask any questions you like, and I think there'll be a panel event too. We can ask some more questions. But please do join the conversation. Do come to drop-ins and come and find out how you can get engaged. Uh, Jim Patrick, I'm really impressed by the fact that you've only got three agreements, you said. How do you manage intellectual property? Well, we don't own any intellectual property. That's not our, not our right. job. People who come to us, they own the intellectual property. Um, so I think it would be a disaster if we try to get ourselves tangled up in all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the collaboration, we just bring people together and then they can sort out how they're going to share that intellectual property, but we won't own any of it. I just, I'm Erica Knight from Health, and I just want to thank you for your presentation. I think your pitch is very inspiring, and I reckon the, the percentage of people who are keen to be entrepreneurs is even higher in the high school space, and I've seen what you've done with kids in IT, especially with Entry 29, and it's fantastic. It's about how do we harness them and keep them in Canberra, mm. and uh, the uh, incubating a Silicon Valley approach, why not? Yep. That's awesome. So um, attraction, retention, and on-selling. Is that what they talk about in, uh, when you've got a company? <laughs> so attracting, I think at the moment, um, a fair bit of that is just opening the doors and the floodgates are opening and people are coming in. <coughs> I think you're talking about the high school hackathons and then the primary school hackathons that have been going on. And I know um, Lighthouse Innovations have got some other teen um, workshops coming up. So there, you're right, there's a lot going on that we've just started or we're supporting people starting in that space. Um, the youth program, the Cause of Stir, went up to 30. So it's, it's from 15 to 30, because we, we reckon you're still young at 30. Um, well, we're all still young, really. But anyway, <laughs> we had to have a focus, because that was what the ACT government gave us money for. So we just extended what youth was a bit. Um, and then how do you retain them? I think a big way of retaining, if you, if you look at why people go to Silicon Valley, I mean, money is one of them. But the other reason is to become a p be part of a culture. Be part of a culture, an ecosystem, and a community where <coughs> you can learn from one another, support one another, and also jump in and out of jobs. So jump in and out of companies that pop in and out of existence, and that's certainly what we're trying to do, create that or grow and leverage and connect that community to uh, some sort of critical mass, um, and attract more people, more ideas, more money, more companies to here so that people will want to stay. I think the other re reason young people might want to stay is because what a great time to be part of it. They're shaping it. 
So if you talk to the people in the youth stir, they're saying, this is great. We're here shaping it. We're shaping Canberra. Um, and I think Andrew Barr is doing a very good job of trying to let them do that too. I was at uh, his ACT budget breakfast and someone complained about the, uh, um, the uh, transport um, things down at the, the lake. What are they called? You know, there's big... No, not the segways. The, the, the actual building they've made out of, of um, ship con shipping containers. Yeah, the shipping containers, yeah. Um, and that's actually quite an in innovative space. And he said to the fellow who asked, he said, well, actually, you know, that's for the young people. That's what the young people want. So I think that's fantastic that he's li listening to what the young people want. And certainly if you see how some of the spaces are changing around the place, I think that will help young people feel it's a good place to be too. Hi. Um, thanks. That was a great speech. I can you just talk a little bit more about the health sand pits? I just wanted to know more about that. Okay, so... Um, if you want to start to grow some sort of industry sector, you need to start thinking strategically around, you know, A, what that opportunity is, and B, who needs to collaborate to make that happen. So that's what the SAMP is about. It's about drawing together the research base, the industry base, and government to say, what are the opportunities? What are the um, business opportunities? Now, that could be commercial, but obviously also government um, and service, government service type opportunities. So the University of New South Wales has a methodology that actually was developed by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council in the UK, <coughs> where you'd know this from NH and MRC. Okay, you put your application in, National Health and Medical Research Council, you put your application in in February, you don't hear anything till about, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to try not to swear because I was an academic for six years and had to do this. In about October, September, October, you hear from people who hate you and telling you what's wrong with your application. If you're lucky, if you're one of the 20% that are lucky, because it's a lottery, to get your grant in the October, you then get to start to use it in January. What the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council does is it says, okay, there's a challenge here with industry. Industry's got some challenges. Draw the industry partners together. Draw the research base together. Workshop for a few days. At the end of it, you decide who's going to get the money, give it to them, and they get on and do it. So that's something that the University of New South Wales has been doing in um, Sydney to try and get the collaboration between the research base and industry working better. So <coughs> they're one of our partners, and they're going to run that methodology for us in Canberra to try and grow some of these industry bases. So if anyone's interested in being part of that sand pit, that collaborative um, strategic development process, then just let me know, and I can uh, draw you into that. But what we're doing for other sectors too.